So I'm here with uh, Senator Kerry Roberts, and um, as some of you may know, uh, Senator uh, Kerry Roberts ran for Congress uh, against Diane Black and was not successful. Uh, then he runs for um, Senate and uh, is successful and is enjoying a wonderful career in the Senate, and then suddenly, with the redistricting, finds himself out of a job. I'm just trying to imagine how you must feel right now. Well, uh, the first thing is I'm disappointed for the people in the 18th Senate District because what this plan does is it separates Robertson County from the rest of Senate District 18 and moves it into Senate District 25. And just to give everybody some background, here, here's what happens. Every 10 years after the census, the state has new Senate and House lines drawn to reflect the population changes. So in Tennessee, we have six some million people divided by 33. So we have 192,000 people that we're trying to put in a Senate district. And, and the problem is, is that our state constitution really doesn't allow us to split counties. But then you've got federal law that says one man, one vote, and some other issues. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is draw 33 Senate districts as close to 192,000 as possible with splitting as few counties as possible. And when you look at the statewide map of 33 districts, there are different ways you can do it, but the way that prevailed was the plan that, that took Robertson County out of Senate District 18 and put it in 25. Well, I'm the senator of Senate District 18 until the election on November 6. I'm not the senator of Senate District 25, and that election isn't until 2014. So that leaves me in limbo for two years. I can, um, you know, when I'm done being a Senator for District 18, I can go back to my normal life and do what I was doing before, or I can just uh, start making plans to run again and run in 2014 for Senate District 25. So um, that's the situation I'm in today. So I'm still the Senator for Senate District 18, and will stay that until November 6th at 12.01 a.m. Uh, well, actually, November 7th at 12.01 a.m., and that's when I cease to be the Senator for Senate District 18. So people have already donated money for you to run again. Right. What happens to that money? Do we all get it back? <laughs> did you send me money? <laughs> did I say we? <laughs> yeah, you did. You said we. Well, actually, uh, there are a couple things that can happen. If I decide to run again, I'm allowed to roll over the money into a new account. Now, any, anybody who gave me money, I'm going to be on the phone. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to ask them, what do you want me to do? If I run again, do you want me to keep it? Uh, do you want me to give it to a charity? Do you want me to give it to another candidate? Do you want me to give it back to you? And obviously, I'm going to leave that decision in the hands of people who gave me money because they gave it to me in good faith. And so I need to be honorable in return and, and let them dictate what happens to that money. Am I going to keep anybody's money who, who doesn't want me to keep it? Absolutely not. So, but um, but I, I do believe that I will be running again. And so if people will allow me to keep it, then we'll just simply get a head start on the next campaign. How does it affect your job tomorrow and to November? Is it really doing anything? That's a good question. Um, I did fight very hard for Senate District 18 in the Senate um, to try and prevent this from happening. And I think, um, you know, when you fight leadership... Um, you can do it in a way that, that uh, they really don't care for and, and you sort of get punished for it. Or you can do it in a way that's honorable and they realize that you're just fighting for your constituents. And, and I chose the latter, not the former. I, I, I stayed very uh, much a gentleman about the whole thing. I tried to win the argument based on the merits of the argument. I didn't get into personal attacks or things like that. So, uh, so my feeling is going forward, I probably, if anything, maybe gained a little bit of respect with my colleagues, so I think, um, I think some good things will happen between now and November. All right. Anything else? I, I tell you what, it's just an absolute honor to get elected to anything. You know, when you, when you consider how many people want to run for office, and then when you do get elected, it's, it's just a really exhilarating thing, and, and you want to get out there and work really hard and do the best job you can, and so, I, you know, that hasn't ended. I mean, I'm, I got elected through November 6th, so I'm not about to... Uh, you know, to go on cruise control. Uh, now that I know on November 7th, I'm not going to be a state senator. I mean, I'm going to continue to work just as hard as I have so that the people who did vote for me uh, look at that and they know it was a good decision. They realize that, that uh, I'm sticking with them till the very end and I'm going to do the best job I can. The Springfield Antique Barn, located at 700 Willow Street in downtown Springfield, has over 30,000 square feet of antiques and collectibles. More than the eye can take in in a single day. So set a day aside and come out and consult with one of their many experts to help you find that precious gem you're looking for.
Only 20 minutes from Nashville, they're easy to find in downtown Springfield. Come on by, you'll be glad you did.